Okay, so we are going to take a look at how to turn the parallel code that we used last time into something uh, serial in nature and to do that we will use the concept of racism okay um, how about we use the racism and to check this out so our racism does not involve uh, uh, black and white people or Asian people or any kind of people it involves um, blue people and red people okay uh, I guess maroon so um, what I want to do is I I want this shop to be a racist shop, which gives preference to the blue guys first. Which means uh, if I, uh, if these guys, like the two lines uh, come up, and uh, so these guys are served first, like they all come and they all go, and only when this entire line is done after that, I want to deal with these guys. Okay, so you know, uh, these guys not so important. Okay, red guys can come later. So that's what we want to do. So we don't want to run things concurrently, we actually want to uh, remove the concurrency that our code already has. So I'm just going to switch over to the screen and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy of this file which uh, provides the same function in a little different way. Um, here's what I'll do. I'll uh, just uh, <coughs> duplicate this, uh, you know, copy and uh, paste it and I will uh, rename this thing to hello share callbacks um, now I'm going to change this function a bit what I'm going to do here is uh, I will uh, I'll add an extra variable here which is uh, done saying now um, what I will do with this variable is uh, pretty simple uh, once I have cleared my interval, when all the uh, iterations are complete, that's when I will call done saying like it were a function. So the third parameter here is function. I'm going to change this uh, code execution uh, to something like uh, this. I'll do hello say rr3, then I'll uh, add a function here. Okay. I mean, you can use any syntax. You can use this syntax if you want to. You can use this syntax. We are not using the this variable inside this function. So, using arrow functions or using conventional functions, both of them are fine. Um, and I'm going to pass this hello uh, say t call uh, out here. Okay. And uh, what else I'm going to do is uh, I will uh, pass another function here. And uh, We'll pass uh, more of these calls here. Um, say three times this. Okay. Now see uh, um, the next call. Uh, I'm like uh, calling out Pratik's name. I'm not doing it after hello here. I'm doing it inside the callback function. Okay. So I'm doing it inside the done saying function. Of course, uh, you can. Uh, start imagining what it does is that uh, it will uh, run uh, this function and when it runs this function inside this function when the count becomes equal to times that is after all the three times have been over that is when the done saying function gets called that is when the next set of uh, stuff is going to happen and similarly one more inside that okay just run that and see if that works the way we uh, wanted this to work as you can see, it does print the way we wanted it. It uh, uh, does hello Arno three times first, and it does uh, hello Pratik twice after that, and it does hello Karima after that. So, if you want uh, to remove concurrency, you need something like callback functions. Uh, so, callback functions, what they do is uh, uh, after the uh, asynchronous part of your code has executed, uh, then you just call another function from there. Now, the disadvantage with this, of course, is that you have this. Uh, you know this whole bracket kind of thing that's happening in your code like that just want to add another one I'll have to add it like this uh, and uh, right so I just keep going on and on and on and finally you just uh, you have some code that looks very much like you know this this you have like a lot of code lines getting executed and after the callback you want to run something those are getting executed here and the worst part is that the variables are getting shadowed so if you create a variable here it's available here if you create a variable here that's available inside and if I have a variable called error and I have a variable called ERR here now if I try to access um, ERR here I can't actually access this error variable anymore um, you know uh, yeah, uh, screen by the screen 
um, I can't access this error variable if um, you know I have this like I put error variable twice in the callbacks um, then here so uh, this error variable refers to this one not to this one right um, and this shadowing problem happens so I would just name things like this maybe and uh, that's like you have to keep in mind that when you're using variables you're not trying to access the outer one and I inadvertently just end up using the inner one so uh, fi figuring out variables is uh, what pain uh, in the neck in this uh, kind of condition so this does not look nice if you have to do like 10 tasks one after the other you just going to end up with a very deep arrow kind of syntax but uh, it gets the job done um, we're going to take a look at uh, something else after this uh, using promises uh, which are available in javascript modern javascript like javascript 6 which helps us do this thing without getting this weird syntax out there yeah